Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this episode of Engines of New York Central, I'll be talking about the railroad's Niagara locomotive. After World War II ended in September 1945, the New York Central Railroad was facing increasing passenger numbers. The Central's chief mechanical engineer of motive power and rolling stock was Paul Kiefer, and he wanted a new steam locomotive that could surpass their Hudsons and Mohawks. Something that could produce 6,000 horsepower and run between New York City and Chicago every day without long breaks. The railroad turned to the American Locomotive Company for a new design. Introducing the Central's first 484 locomotive. Okay, sort of the first. An experimental 484 was built in 1931 to test the viability of a high-pressure steam locomotive. Its boiler was divided into three sections at varying pressure values. It was ultimately deemed a failure, reduced to Selkirk Yard hump switching service, and scrapped in 1939. Back to the new 484, while most railroads referred to this wheel configuration as a northern, the central called them Niagara's, derived from the Niagara River and Falls. They had four wheels up front, eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels. They were rated for speeds around 85 miles per hour, with 79 inch drivers producing 6,680 horsepower and 61,568 pounds of tractive effort. Engine and tender weigh in at 891,000 pounds. They came in at a length of 115 feet, 5.5 inches, a width of 10 feet, 8 inches, and a height of 15 feet, 2 inches. The locomotives came equipped with a Hancock 3 chime long bell whistle and an air horn. The New York Central was so confident in the Niagara's design that before a prototype could be delivered, they placed an order for 26 additional locomotives. Number 6000 was the first to arrive in March 1945, designated an S1A. This one would be unique in the sense that it had 75-inch drivers due to wartime restrictions. The remaining 25, number 6001 to 6025, were delivered throughout the rest of 1945 and in 1946, and designated an S1B. Number 5500 was delivered as the 27th and last engine in 1946, designated an S2A. It was an experimental variant using Franklin Caprati poppet valves instead of Baker gear. Niagara's were unique in that they lacked steam domes to negotiate the low height clearances on much of the eastern half of the railroad. They also used large PT5 tenders, also featuring a large overhang on the back to fit the locomotives on the turntables. Despite their size, they had low water capacity, thanks in part to the use of track pans where locomotives could scoop up water on the fly. Lower water capacity meant more room for coal. Niagara's were also unusual in their headlight placement. The majority of the New York Central's modern steam locomotives had their headlights on the center of the smoke box. Niagara's had theirs on the top as a single or dual beam light. With a huge 100 inch boiler pushing the limits of the railroad's loading gauge, no steam domes, smoke deflectors, and an elevated headlight position, they looked quite unique amongst the Central's fleet. Also equipped with roller bearings, they were very easy to move, so much so a group of people could tow it along. Six locomotives were put up against E7 diesels in a 1946 trial to compare costs and efficiency. The results were relatively close, the steam locomotive challenging the diesel's efficiency. First placed into revenue service in 1945, the Niagara's were placed onto premier passenger trains like the 20th Century Limited, Empire State Express, Chicagoan, and the Commodore Vanderbilt. They were also placed into mail and milk train service, along with the occasional freight train. Running between New York City and Chicago, Niagara's could make the run with just one stop for coal. Per month, the locomotives ran around 26,000 miles. If a train needed pulling, the Niagara's could do it with ease. They were almost always on duty. They were extremely efficient, smooth riding, and could quickly reach high speeds, all while delivering plenty of power. Plans were even made for a 4444 divided drive steam locomotive based on the Niagara. Called the C1A, it was to compete with the Pennsylvania Railroad's T1. It would have been 123 feet and 1 inch long and weigh 970,400 pounds. It never materialized. Even though the Niagara's were very successful, they were introduced late in the era of steam traction. Throughout the mid to late 1940s, diesels were popping up across the New York Central. 
The experimental 5500, deemed a Super Niagara for its increased fuel efficiency, would be reduced to a parts donor by 1951 after only five years in service. Dieselization began on the East Coast and turned west, pushing the Niagaras into Ohio and Indiana. Between 1955 and July 1956, when their equipment trusts expired, Railroad President Alfred E. Perlman ordered that all 27 Niagara locomotives be scrapped. The Central was not in an enviable financial position during the 1957-58 recession, so any scrap value was of interest. Diesels were the future. Easier to service, more economical and efficient, and cleaner too. While nothing major of the Niagara's exists today, there is still one out there. Sorta. At the 10 and a quarter inch Staple Ford Miniature Railway in Leicestershire, England, a live steam Niagara model was completed in 1998 after 25 years of construction. It's the largest of its kind and gives rides to tourists during the railway's public charity events. The New York Central's Niagara locomotives have been deemed the ultimate steam locomotive. They possessed extremely high rates of power, reliability, and efficiency, and were a do-it-all sort of engine. Passenger, mail, milk, or freight, they did it all with ease. They were unlike any other steam locomotive, even rivaling diesels of their time. While it's unfortunate none survive today, at least we have a model of one, to remind everyone of their impact on what was the New York Central system, the road to the future. Thanks for watching this episode of Engines of New York Central. Stay tuned for next time where I'll discuss the S-Motor locomotives. Thank you again for watching.